So my new startup is making money. In fact, it made $13,500 in just 24 hours. Now the startup is called RevTrack. It's a tool for YouTubers and creators to track their revenue from their YouTube videos. But what if I told you that I didn't actually code most of this startup? Instead, it was coded by this guy, AI almost entirely literally i'm not kidding most of the time my coding sessions now look like this i open my laptop and look at my to-do list to see what i should do next for example adding a loading screen to one of my pages inside of my application then i open my code editor but instead of coding i open the chat window for my ai on the side and i just tell it in natural language please build a loading screen for this page inside of my app then i click apply and after a couple of iterations i have exactly what i was looking for without necessarily writing a single line of code myself if i didn't have ai we would have literally probably had to hire a junior engineer already to do a lot of this work for us i would have essentially been in the role of just managing this other engineer who is writing the code but because of ai i don't need that because whatever instructions i would give to the engineer i just give to ai and it just spits the code out for me so the question that this has made me ask myself is what does this mean in the future of programmers and specifically why did my co-founder who is a non-technical person and who had the original idea need me to code this app in the first place why did he not just do it himself is he just being dumb and he just wasn't aware of how much ai can do so the first thing to talk about is how ai is changing coding so yes absolutely ai makes coding like 10 times faster it is so easy for me now to churn out new features extremely extremely quickly features that even can be quite complicated to think about in terms of the logic and like what i'm gonna do i can just tell ai please build me this feature and often it just figures out the logic for me so i didn't even need to spend that much time thinking about it before ai if i wanted to build the same app to the same state that it is now i would have had to be working on this full time like 80 hours a week and still it would have taken much longer whereas now i was literally able to just do this part time on the side like literally it's made this much money already but in terms of how much time i put into it it's more like a side project rather than my full time thing so the question is why did my co-founder even need me so i split this app 50 50 with my co-founder who is non-technical he has an audience in the space so he's able to market it. he has the brand so he's the one that's actually getting us customers so then why didn't he just use ai to build this himself why did he give me 50 percent of this company when it's actually so easy for me to build this well that's because despite what it may seem like despite how effective ai can be at helping developers it is not good enough to allow a non-technical person to build a real useful piece of software at least not yet and now i'm gonna give you the couple of reasons why despite of all of this no, AI is not replacing programmers and you absolutely still need a technical person with great coding skills to build something like this, even though AI can write a lot of the code. Reason number one is AI hallucination. So AI is like 90% or 95% good now when it comes to coding, like 90% of the time it gives me the code that I want. But the crucial part is, as anyone will know, with software, you can't have software that works only 90%. Software has to work 100%. Even if there's only one error somewhere in your code base, the entire thing is not going to work. And that is the crucial part. You could have a non-technical guy make a 90% good application, but that last 10% is still gonna require someone technical to go in there and find the problems and fix the problems. And if you're non-technical, if you have no idea what you're doing, you don't understand any of the code, you don't have the ability to go and find and fix the bugs ai is good 90 percent of the time but 10 percent of the time is still hallucinate it gives you solutions that are completely wrong no matter how many times i tell it to fix it fix it fix it sometimes it just cannot fix it because for some reason it's like a gap in the data that the ai has been trained on that it just doesn't know how to deal with and a big problem as well is that a lot of the time well actually not even a lot of time but some of the time which is enough to make this a big thing is that sometimes when it's just not possible to do what i'm trying to do ai will still confidently tell me yes it is possible to do this this is how you do it and no matter how many times i keep telling it 
to change the code, to edit it and tell it that it's not working. It just keeps churning out more and more code that just doesn't work because sometimes it's just not possible to do what I was trying to do. And it requires a technical person to then use critical thinking and understand like, okay, it's just not possible to do it because AI just for some reason doesn't have the capability to say, I don't know, or to tell me like, no, sorry, it's not possible to do this. And that is why even if you get AI to be almost as good as human, it's still not going to be able to replace a human because it needs to be 100% as good as a human. Reason number two, AI cannot build new things. So the reason why it seems like for most people that yes, AI is now pretty much as good as a human is that because most of the time when people tell AI to build something like in these viral YouTube videos or something, you're telling it to build something quite simple, like something that's been done quite many times in the past. And for something like that, like you're just building a simple to-do app, AI can do it entirely because it has so much data available in its training set to extract the perfect to-do application and just churn it out for you. But building something like that is not valuable. You are never going to make money by building a new to-do application. The way you make money is by building something novel, something useful that solves a problem that hasn't been solved before. And by design, an LLM that's been trained on past data won't be able to build something like this from scratch because by design the training data is not gonna already have solutions to the thing that you're trying to build. Reason number three, AI won't find problems for you. So like I said, AI is an excellent code monkey. If you ask it to write specific kind of code, it can do it very, very effectively. But then when things go wrong, like there is some bug inside of the code that might not even be apparent straight away, a case in point, with our software, we found that after a while, the server costs were a lot higher than we anticipated. And it was something that would have become a problem down the line if I didn't fix it. And this is just something that AI is not going to highlight to you. You need a technical person with understanding of the architecture, with understanding how to look at server stats and things like that to be able to point out like, okay, this is a bit too high. Let's find the problem. AI just won't tell you this. And for these kinds of problems, even if you ask AI to solve it for you, after you find the problem, it might not give you a solution that actually works. And again, here, you need the solutions to work 100% of the time, not just 95% of the time. Reason number three is AI will not architect your app. So again, if you're building something simple, like your entire software is just a React app, you don't have a server, you don't have databases, you don't deal with APIs, all these kind of things. AI can probably do that effectively because it's very, very simple. But as soon as you start adding multiple different pieces into the mix, like for example, we, we have a front end, we have a server, we talk to many different APIs, we have a database and we need to deal with server costs and all these kind of things. It becomes very complicated and you need a human to be able to understand how to architect and connect these pieces together intelligently. Like whenever I'm building something new to our app, the real value is me like thinking in my mind, like, okay, what functions am I going to make and like what's going to happen in in what order and what's going to be updated in this database and what's the structure of my database going to be like and once i understand all of this the rest of it is just like a monkey task like execution i'm just writing out the code now it's just that the writing out the code is much faster which is nicer for me as a developer but if you're not technical if you don't have any understanding of how to even begin thinking about how to architect all these things you're not going to be able to build the app and the final reason is that ai doesn't understand your users so when it comes to building out a software like this obviously the first part is going to be very coding heavy you're just building the first version but as soon as you have any kind of users the most important part becomes just listening to your users and then based on your users feedback implementing changes in your application in a way that makes the user experience as good as possible and the thing is that a lot of the feature requests that users send to you or the bug reports and things like that what we're noticing is that even if we were to hire a support person to help us that support person would almost have to be a developer because when there is a bug you need to understand like where to even look in the code to find where this issue might be coming from and sure again now ai is getting better you have ai tools now to understand the whole code base and things like this but it would be very difficult for someone who doesn't understand the architecture to even begin to tell ai precisely what to fix and where and things like this and when it comes to all these feature requests some of them might not even be possible or it might be possible but it might not be worth to spend the time to do it right now and you need a human with critical thinking skills to understand understand what to implement and how again because if you just tell ai okay build this feature it's just gonna do what you tell it it's gonna try to build it and crucially even if it's not possible to do it in the way that you want ai is still gonna give you code okay you just do it like this because ai just doesn't seem to have the ability to tell sorry it's not possible to do this or sorry 
I see what you're trying to do, but this is probably not a priority right now. You should probably prioritize this. Like these kind of critical decisions, you still need humans with technical knowledge to make them. So what's the conclusion here? The conclusion here is that the kind of developers who are just code monkeys, who are just good at writing code, but don't have any understanding of the architecture, who don't understanding how software works at a deep level, and who don't have the critical thinking skills to make decisions about what kind of code to write and things like this. These are the kind of developers that are absolutely going to be in danger in this age of AI. But the kind of developers who have these skills, these higher level development skills, are absolutely not going to be replaced by AI anytime soon or if we do get to the stage where they are a place then i think in that scenario we'll just be living in a very different kind of world anyway like so many different things will be replaced by ai in the scenario where ai can literally do this entire software development process itself so what does this mean for you it means like i say in pretty much every video don't focus on knowing how to write code focus on understanding how code works learn as much as possible about the inner workings of websites and software like understand how to build software that users actually want. Think about problems that you want to solve in code because now we're in this very short window of opportunity but writing code is very, very quickly. So if you have some problems, some idea you want to solve with code, you can potentially just build this completely on your own as long as you have this understanding, essentially orchestrate all of these different pieces together. If you want to see me talk about more broadly how coding is changing and the new opportunities that this is bringing to you as a potential developer in 2025, you can watch this video right here. So watch that video next and I will see you in the next one.